I do want to give uh, people in the room an opportunity to ask, let's take two or three questions now, and then we'll head out maybe to Max and then to Fawaz. Who would like to ask the first question? question. Uh, we hate them. What did you mean? We hate them. We'll, we'll, we'll give Mark a few minutes to think about what to say there. Uh, let's have in the front row, we have a, a very distinguished expert of the subject, uh, so I hope the panelists are sharpening their pencils. Mark. Mark Fitzpatrick from the uh, International Institute for Strategic Studies. A question to the person who un I think understands Iran most, uh, Roxanne. Um, can you see Iran moving to more explicitly uh, acknowledging the strategic uh, purpose of their enrichment program? And a couple years ago, when the fuel swap idea was proposed by Obama, it was uh, uh, attacked on all sides of the political spectrum in part because some said, why would we give up our strategic assets? Uh, and if they do explicitly acknowledge it as a strategic asset, would they be willing to trade that asset for something of equal value, such as uh, a restoration of their economic uh, viability uh, that has been encroached upon by sanctions? Thank you, Mark. Um, in the back, I think there's, we'll take one more question now, please. Max, your um, talk was quite seductive, so I'd like to know what 11 is. When we dial that, you know, ratchet up, what does 11 look like comprehensively? That's a good, good question. Why don't we, Rock, are you, when we dial up the, 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 the sanctions uh, dial, what does that mean and what will that imply? Yeah, okay, good, very good question. I was thinking the same thing, actually. Um, maybe we'll give Roxanne maybe a chance to start and then Mark can take the two uh, in, in turn that, that he, he got. Roxanne, please. I'd like to answer that question, which is a really good question, um, by picking up also on a, part that, uh, a point that Danny made. I think we are looking at a region at the moment that is not lending itself to a great deal of acknowledgement of what secrets lie inside because everything is so dangerous. Um, what I would see more likely is a process that Iran is already starting, which is to develop a tri-state area in the center to, to bucket up, which is Iraq, Syria, and Iran. And I'm seeing this bridge because I think they're really worried that the next step, especially as the MEK, the Mojahedin Echal, attempts to get delisted, it's apparently sitting in the inbox of Hillary Clinton today as we speak, as it attempts to get delisted in some real way, the United States is beginning possibly the same step by step that it had with Chalabi and uh, the National um, Iraqi Congress. So the difficulty I think that we have in terms of any real uh, honesty is that there's no real reason for Iran to feel as though giving up its um, its nuclear capability is really going to protect it. And it comes down to one of those bottom lines, which is had it had nuclear capability at the time that Saddam turned around and attacked it in the Iran-Iraq war, Saddam just might not have. And it really does, that is one of the conversations that started the whole uh, nuclear uh, rejuvenation of uh, its industry after uh, that war. So I don't think it's going to acknowledge on the first point. I think it's going to try to develop a much tighter relationship with its neighbors on the second point. And I think that to it, uh, from its perspective, the um, ec something economic is simply not going to be sufficient. I do want to take up a, uh, an issue but, uh, in terms of your wording that I said that the Iranians felt that it was easy to uh, sell their oil and that it was one of the easier sides of the sanctions. It's certainly not been, and I agree with you, it is an expensive uh, operation that they are encountering. Um, however, they've become really good at sanctions jumping. They just got a huge amount of wheat um, shipped in not too long ago, completely using outside alternative financing. Uh, this is something that, for example, the Syrians are finding really difficult to, to, to manage. And so it shows that they've become pros. And so my uh, view in response to something else you wrote, you wrote 
um, is that, in fact, I don't think sanctions really are going to make the ultimate uh, break point for Iran, and that it will have to come down to a decision on the part of the West whether they're going to bomb it or whether they're not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark? Well, well, first of all, them, I mean the regime. Uh, and why do we hate the regime? I think we all have a pretty good understanding of why we hate the regime, because this is a regime that murders and rapes and brutalizes its own people. It funds deadly terrorist organizations around the world, and I think many of us hate this regime or don't trust this regime to have a nuclear weapon or even have nuclear weapons capability. With respect to sanctions, I think that what we can do with respect to sanctions in ratcheting up the pressure is, is to go after Khamenei's oil wealth and his energy wealth in ways that we haven't done yet. There's four trillion dollars worth of natural gas sitting in the ground in Iran. We've got to make it clear that he will never get it out of the ground and he will never sell it. We have to go sector by sector, designating... Well, just, just, sorry, because I, this, I was interested in this. Right. So what does that actually mean? Well, like, what it means is... It, like, what, would, what are the actual practical steps beyond the next set of sanctions that is in the drawer right. and can be taken out and then implemented? Well, right now there's a bill before Congress that you would de declare the Iranian energy sector a zone of proliferation concern because revenues from the energy sector are being used by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps to build nuclear weapons and to fund proliferation. So you would, you would declare the energy sector a zone of proliferation concern. You would declare the telecommunications sector a zone of electronic repression because telecom is being used and technology is being used to track dissidents, hunt them down, and kill them. You would declare the construction industry a zone of proliferation concern because it's controlled by Khatam al-Anbiya, the uh, conglomerate owned and operated by the Revolutionary Guard Corps. So, Danny, these sanctions are not Iraq sanctions. We're not talking about a comprehensive embargo that we would, we're going to prevent everything from getting into Iraq, into Iran. And by the way, Roxanne, we're, we're, we want them to buy wheat. I mean, we want them to feed their people. We want them to get medicine and humanitarian supplies in there. And in fact, sanctions against Iraq, it's as brutal as they were with respect to the uh, impact they had on the Iraqi people, in combination with intrusive inspections and the credible threat of military force actually worked. Because much to our dismay, we discovered after the invasion of Iraq in 2003 that we actually had been successful in stripping Saddam of his nuclear weapons capability. So they did work. And sanctions have worked in the past. They worked against Libya, but they never work in isolation. They work as a comprehensive strategy. I agree with Max. You need the credible threat of military force. I agree with everybody at the table who I think would support negotiations with the Iranians. But we have to negotiate, and we have to negotiate tough, and we cannot concede. And I would say one other point in conclusion. I don't, I don't agree with Danny. The entire Israeli military establishment doesn't oppose military strikes. They, in fact, have said very explicitly in the words of Mayor Dagan, I support military strikes when, quote unquote, the dagger is at our throat and it's cutting into our flesh. Now, quite a graphic way of putting it, and you would expect that from the former head of Mossad. But he's made it very clear publicly and privately many, many times he supports military strikes. He just doesn't agree with Netanyahu's assessment of the timeline. And he thinks okay. we should give all of these other measures time to work. Good. Thank you. Thank you.